Okay, I'm Steve Corns. I'm the project manager uh, for the electric bus project in um, Nottingham. I know many people here, and um, I'm really I'm not so much talking about fast charging because Dan's asked me to recap on our whole project. So that's what I'm going to try and do. Try and tell you ha where we got where we are today, um, how we achieved the finance, uh, one of the most difficult things in in the current climate. And, and how we built up our fleet to be currently the biggest one anyway in the UK. So just a bit of background on Nottingham City. I mean, th these are the sorts of numbers of people we're talking about. There's a, a million people within the travel to work area, half a million conurbation residents, and 300,000 within the city boundary itself. Um, we're, we're a unitary authority, so we're in charge of highways and public transport, and we've always been very pro-public transport. So, uh, and, and the background to, to the actual public transport itself, uh, everyone knows it's a deregulated market, that, that left some holes in the services over the years, um, and 90% of the departures were commercial, so the, these holes were plugged with a local link network set up by my, um, my boss which does about seven million journeys per annum now and uh, um, on, on quite a few routes and you'll see a map of that later. So that, that, that gave us, uh, and also as city council, we are a fleet owner, so we had 60 vehicles, so that put us in a, a good position to have a business case to buy vehicles. So, so there, there we go, the, 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 the local link network there, it, we have, there, there's a medi link, there's a work link, there's a shop link, there's an event link, so they're just, not all of them running all the time. For instance, the event link, it, it runs the cricket ground or football grounds, etc. cetera. Um, and then our role in that, uh, the city council role, obviously the concessionary travel scheme, which is costing us a lot of money, and a lot of people didn't understand that for a bit, at nine million pounds at the moment. And the, the stuff in bold, the stuff in bold there, is, is the stuff that pertains to my project. So we, we, we're doing contractor bus services, 2.8 million pounds, and we set up a statutory quality partnership scheme in 2010 with um, the first one in the country, I think, which had a, uh, an escalating uh, um, emission scale. It started off at Euro 3. Um, um, and also we've got a multi-operator ticket. So. So why, why did we choose to go electric? Well, originally I, I was brought in and I worked on the ethanol. We, we got a couple of ethanol buses. Uh, it, they, were, they were great, it was all running, but unfortunately with the tax breaks on ethanol fuel by the government, you couldn't actually buy ethanol in this country, which involved me importing it. It was made from wood waste, but then the food fuel debate happened and that sort of didn't help biofuels or ethanol much. So those, in fact, last year were converted back to diesel, which was a sad day. But so, so we, uh, we own 60 vehicles, um, you know, and they were getting old. We still got a few old ones, which I'd like to replace. And, and, and I have to say the biggest factor there in, in, in us is, is the Green Bus Fund. And, and without that, we, I don't think anyone could afford to introduce this new technology. We're, we're also doubly lucky in Nottingham that we have the rather controversial workplace parking levy. So that's basically, for those of you who don't know, it's um, a tax on workplaces, parking, which is not, I think it started around about £260 and it's something like £378 a year per workspace. Now all that's ring-fenced. It's ring-fenced funding to go back into transport projects. So that's funded tram, the tram, it's funded the electric bus project and, and various other bits and pieces. Um, also we, we won a, a, a bid uh, for a better bus area bid for around about 11, 12 million pounds and that could have meant the removal of BSOG or the devolution of BSOG um, away from the operators back to us. It hasn't quite happened like that. So, so the LCEB incentive of six pence a kilometre for a low carbon emission bus was was something we were looking at as well. And obviously, with our SQPS, we, 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 you know, we wanted to be seen to be reducing emissions. And then we, we, we all know about the fuel security debate that happened a while ago, and we're still looking at that. There's the environmental policies and the NOx stuff and the client earth 
cases and, and, and all the legislation to it, we're not seeming to get to at the moment, which we want to be part of as well. Um, the other strength we have as a city council is I think we're one of the most sustainable city councils in the fact that we generate our own energy so, um, from waste. So we do have an energy supply, although I haven't successfully managed to um, incorporate it into charging the buses as of yet for, for various reasons. Uh, and the other thing we had was property. Um, that became a major problem I noticed when I was trying to build the charging bases is the rent rentals because even the, the, we have park and ride um, sites in the city council that e even our own property departments wanted to charge me huge amounts of rent for the land they had available. So I was really confined to the park and rides. Now this, so going back there, you know, the cost savings element of, of, of that this, this is what we this is what my what my boss sort of roughly put together this was you know when we were looking into the, the cost savings now um, these these are a few years old now and, and it's looking at um, an optair size bus so so basically we, we if you look here the payback we were looking at was about four years I mean it, obviously it depends on the mileage but and it's round about that now, but and then eight to eight point seven years we've got there. Eight, I, I'd probably go lower than that now for with no grant. So with a vehicle life of twelve, fifteen years, you, you're getting payback on, on these electric vehicles. If you know, if in those days you were brave enough to put one into place, which obviously a lot of the operators were resistant of because of reliability and the fact it's a very new product. So, so then we had the implementation stages of the project. So, I mean, one of the things when I started doing was to develop the network of charges. So here, here we were looking at the number of buses we needed for the, for the contracted services. As you can see, uh, these are the link bus services. Um, and this is what we started with, four buses here. Actually, they, these were run by Trent Barton until about a month or so ago, until a few weeks ago, and that's now moved to all these buses now operated by Community Transport um, who successfully bid for, for those services. Now with the first four I um, turned up at Trent Barton to have a look at their board, um, their, their distribution board and luckily there was power, it's not something you normally find in a bus station distribution board, they're normally absolutely full. So I put in four trickle chargers and a rapid charger there to get that project moving and then I went to Community Transport to try and do the same thing, but they just didn't have the power. So we upgraded the supply. Luckily, it was out on the street. And we put, uh, we've now got 10 trickle charge points. These are just three phase points and two rapid chargers in that one depot. The, the Medilinks, once the, I'll show you how, the, how we bought the buses, because basically we bought four and then four and then 17 and then 20 or, or 20 and then 17 so suddenly after three years we suddenly b had an enormous amount of buses so to be prepared for that I had to build a big charging base so we we built one it's got 440 kva substation three rapid charges and 24 it can tr trickle charge 24 buses so that was that was the first one uh, I mean I've just uh, and then around the city I've put seven rapid charges in total so that's five at community transport three at this the base I'm talking about here which is basically the Medilink base and then one at a bus station uh, one at Manvers Street uh, the Trent Barton depot which I'll have to move soon um, this this is this maps in a funny place really but this is gives you an example all the green routes this is what we've, these are the local link routes and these are what we've electrified. So, so those green routes, they're virtually all electric now. And the, the, the last city, um, the, the um, park and rides moving from here and round here, they go, they'll be fully electric in January. So the BYD buses for that project are arriving and we're testing them out on the centre link um, where we just need a peak vehicle requirement of three. So we're, we're testing those out and they'll be good to go. So at the moment, the, this is actually 
the, the, the big bay, the first big base I, I built on, on that side, that's actually that side. There's three lanes there and charging. There, that's a charging pillar there. And there's, there's a charging pillar. I'm not sure if that's one, but there's two cables come over to do two lanes there. And that does that one. And then there's three rapid charges down there. This is actually an extension to that base that was done a year ago. And uh, it was quite technical because there are all these trees here. So this is cellular confinement to protect the tree roots. That's the substation build for, that, for, that, for this original site. So at the moment, we're standing at a 15.1 million pound project, phase one and two, as I said, which equates to green bus funds, basically. So you could say green bus fund one and two. We, we got four vehicles in each of those. And then, and then phase three, which I had to have this bus, this, this station ready for, uh, charging base ready for, 20 vehicles, and then 17 for Green Bus Fund 4. And I'd like to say at this point, all these vehicles were optairs. When Green Bus Fund started, there was no options, which was, uh, th there was no real competition in terms of electric vehicles. Um, and I could go on the internet and I could find lots of electric vehicles, but they're all Chinese and you could never find them here at all, and mainly, uh, or Solaris. And they just weren't available. And then, and then we had a bit more competition turning up uh, in, in my last bid, so uh, one by B BYD. That, is, that phase of the project is, is, is going in now. I've built a big base for that. I've got a little picture on these slides to show you, which actually, funnily enough, can only charge 12 BYDs. And their huge battery capacity means that it takes a substation twice as big as that one to charge 24 or th rapid charge the um, optairs because their battery um, their batteries are 95 kilowatt hours our new BYDs are 345 so there's a, there's, there's a lot of differences in weight and um, and range uh, and my f the phase six which is my leb bid no more vehicles I'm uh, fortunately for Nottingham in, in in this tranche of the bidding so I've got around about a million pounds to put more infrastructure in around the city, which is actually how I financed the BYD charging. And, th and that's what I've just constructed here. This is for the, these are the BYD chargers. These are actually the rapid chargers on the original compound. So, so the feedback now uh, about the project, well, to, to be honest, originally uh, the, these buses turned up and they should have been out to fast charge. The, um, the first buses I got, well, I took them to a fast charger, plugged them in, absolutely nothing happened. Um, the protocols didn't work with, with anything existing. So we, we, we had to form then a collaboration, which I was pushing very heavily myself to try and find a charger manufacturer who'd work with a vehicle manufacturer, um, which took about three goes. And then we, 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 we worked with APT, which make these, and we changed some aspects of the charger. Um, uh, and Derek will probably tell you from York will probably tell you about uh, when you don't change some of the aspects of the charger, what might possibly happen. Basically, what we had to do, we, uh, the, the, if that's a car, for instance, it would charge for 20 minutes off that. There's no problem for that bit of equipment to do that. A, a bus wants two hours of that, and, and the car requests full bore. It requests full 50 kilowatts. So you can imagine you've got a bus request 50 kilowatts for two hours. Well, the, the, ch the, the manufacturers of that equipment said to me that was their destruction test. So they weren't prepared to warranty that equipment. So then I had to like, get this collaboration together. And Sir Control, who make those charges, were, were, were very, very helpful. And we, we re-engineered part of that charger to give a pulse profile. It's, I can't remember exactly what the profile, but it's something like five minutes full power one or two minutes, 50% power. It's, it's of that order. To, to, obviously, it dropped our charging rate, which, which I wasn't happy about, but we got a warranty on the chargers. And we, because we'd fallen at that point when they knocked, because they just knocked it all the rates down, and, and we'd, we were getting about half a percent a minute, which really wasn't worth having. And now we're close to one. But one thing that has been flagged up last year, in the beginning of this year, because we hadn't seen it in the three or four years. It was cold last year and hadn't been cold in winter. And, and uh, we saw it the other day. Temperature is having an impact. And unfortunately, I, 
I see Colin's presentation and, and he can go into all this technical data and I really wish I could, but I'm writing tenders, bringing in money, being chased around by operators and trying to do basically do everything. So I, and, and I've got scientific background, I really would like to um, be looking into this temperature impact. Um, so uh, other impacts, oh, oh yeah, and the, the, the importance of an, in, an independent operational base when you're tendering out contracts is essential. And when I spoke in Brussels, I, a lot of the operators there, they understood that because they, because of the risk, the financial risk of an operator taking on building something like this, it, you know, for five years, for a five-year contract, it just isn't viable. So the fact that we can, we can build that uh, and provide the vehicles so the, the, the operator just basically gives us drivers is, is a, you know, that's a great way forward and I think that's one of the re another reason why we've been successful. It's these combinations of factors. We own our own fleet, we have a workplace parking levy and we, we, we took it on ourselves to build everything and then put that on the tendered contracts. Um, obviously, many of you will be familiar with these. You, you don't just drive electric buses like you, especially uh, our early ones, like you do a normal bus. You know, you don't just chuck them out 400 miles, fill them up with diesel. You, you have to think about, normally we were putting a rapid charge in during the day to make those work. And then what you see is, is driver training so important. I saw it with our, with our original operator and our, and our community transport operators. It's completely different energy consumption because of the use or, or lack of use of regenerative braking, which, which I I've, can see on our new Vera City telemetry. It can, it's on, the, on the Optair buses, it's putting 870 kilowatts back in. I mean, it's enormous amounts of energy that you can recover. And so we, we try to tell our drivers, you know, you shouldn't be braking. You should not be braking. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> within reason. <laughs> um, battery range, as I said, that's, that, that's uh, been affected by temperature. I really need to start looking at it. We, we initially had problems with reliability uh, of, of vehicles. Um, and like I said, I, I think this was linked with the, 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 the fast launch into the market of vehicles in this country when, when there, were, there weren't many. And quickly, this is just some data uh, looking at the energy consumption we're getting. Now, these, these are the BYD, the big vehicles, and, and these are the Optairs. So, you know, one kilowatt hour, these are per mile, not kilometre figures. Uh, Vera City uh, gave me per mile. I had to revise everything else I had last night. Um, but basically, yeah, the, these are good figures, better than we originally thought, because we all say one kilometre, um, one kilowatt a kilometre. You can see that's a lot better than that. Um, the BYDs obviously are heavier and they're doing a longer range. But that computes in, in terms of cost. So I did some rough... Um, calculations, what, what's happening with cost. Um, now this is, this, that was the diesel hedge price for community transport last year. Um, and so for a mile, we're assuming a 10 mile per gallon bus, you know, th these are the assumptions down here. Um, and, a, and a BSOG rate of 35 pence per litre on diesel. So, so if you go through these figures, they're, they're using half a litre a mile, one of these diesel um, buses. It's costing about 45 pence take off the grant, it's costing you about 27 pence a mile. So then we get the solo EV. I've put the fuel cost in at 12 pence a kilowatt hour, which, you know, it, it, I, you can probably get cheaper, but I've just averaged it out. So that's with, it, with, with your LCEB grant, that which is six pence a kilometre, so I put that as nine pence a mile. Your, your, your cost per mile there is three pence. So that's a saving of 24 pence a mile over the diesel. And then the BYD, same electricity price, obviously. Um, this is the, the, the consumption, 1.65 kilowatts per mile, hour per mile off that data from Viricity yesterday that I, I dragged off. So our cost there taken off, 11 pence a mile. It's uh, 16p a mile cheaper. And then now, this is what I'm interested in, uh, uh, off-peak electricity tariff. I've got 6.9 pence of the contract I negotiated. So these are the costs I'm getting. So basically, we actually go into the negative here. With the, with the grant taken off that, I don't know if you can actually do that. I don't claim the grants. But um, yeah, so the, the costs are very effective there. 
in, in terms of the, the BYD, it's costing three pence a mile. Um, uh, I could just, and, and the perception of these vehicles is great. You know, the, the people like them, they, they see them, the drivers love them because of the lack of um, vibration. I've had drivers thanking me, older drivers thanking me that, they, that you know, that they're not vib being shaken to pieces when they're, when they're driving. Um, then, then people know they're low emissions. We've branded them very well. You might have been looking at some of the branding. Um, I, I did have some templates, there's no time to show them. And that's important, branding. We, engaging bus operators, that's not been easy at all, I have to say, not been easy at all. Um, but the community transport, our favorite operator, our, operator, our vehicles are absolutely fantastic. And they put a lot of effort and a lot of time in. And, and, and I liaise with them all the time, you know, constantly. And I'm happy with that. That partnership is fantastic. That's what made its work, and 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 that's given us, you know, a political, you know, especially now. All of a sudden, we were doing this on our own a few years ago, and everyone was trying to go. Oh, we're not sure what's going to happen. Keep it over there. But now everyone's quite keen on it. So we're hoping to unlock some more money. And in terms of the future, well, we wanted to go for an electric, single electric solution. Obviously, um, non Nottingham City Transport are, are going for the gas option. Um, we're a go ultra low city and that will bring in more charging and more support for cars and and obviously as part of the low emission zone in 2020 every bus entering the city as part of the SQPS has to be Euro 6 um, uh, 2018 I think they've got to be Euro 5 sorry I'll rush through that but uh, any questions at this time we'll, we'll take questions at the end yeah okay well thank you very much <laughs>